This morning I'm at Abbott's Bay on Derwent Water and I'm lined up a shot of Otter Island. And this is the sort of thing that you might have expected from me two years ago. I used to do an awful lot of photography down here on the edge of the lake. It was really my speciality if I had one. But since I went full time, I've been doing less and less photography on the edge of the lake and doing more and more up in the mountains. And really that's because I became a little bit jaded with this and I, my photographs were starting to look very similar all the time. And so I decided that I wanted to, to make a change and to uh, change what I was photographing and the way that I was photographing things. And I've set this composition up. It's a very, very simple shot. I'm shooting at 50 mil and I've just got the island. And that is really how I used to shoot. I used to shoot a lot longer. But as I started to go more and more up into the mountains, I started to use more and more foreground interest, which ultimately led to me shooting a lot wider. And what I really want to do today is talk about the next step in my journey as a photographer, the, the next evolution for me. I do think it's really important that we do evolve as photographers, that we try new things, that we push ourselves off in different directions. I think if you're a photographer like me that shares a lot of work on social media, it can get very boring for our followers if we do the same things over and over and over again. And to be honest with you, I started to get a bit bored with it as well. Um, and I'm sure you know many of you that have been watching my channel for a while got a bit bored of me turning up to the edge of the lakes in the Lake District and taking essentially the same photo over and over and over again. And that's really why I started to do more up in the mountains. I wanted to do something a bit different. I wanted to try something, uh, diff push myself a bit harder. The other thing is I think if we continue to do the same thing over and over again, we stop progressing as photographers, we stop learning. And I think that can cause real problems with our motivation and our passion for photography. Um, if we just keep doing the same things over and over and over again, we kind of lose that motivation to go out and, and take photographs. It becomes a little bit boring. We become a little bit jaded. So what does all that mean for me? Well, recently I've been having the urge to be more creative in my photography. Because I typically shoot large vistas well-known locations. Uh, I think that the, there is a limit to the amount of creativity that I can put into my photography. Largely, most of my shots are really a variation of what many people have done before. And I still enjoy that, I still love that. Um, it's still important for me to capture uh, those images and have my own take on, on the classic scenes. And I'm certainly not one of those photographers that gets very snobby about people who photograph the iconic scenes, you know, things like the Duke of Portland Boathouse or even Otter Island in this case. I don't get snobby about that. I think we can learn so much about composition and about photography by shooting the classic scenes because they're classic for a reason. But I find myself wanting to push myself harder. And I think that that ultimately means that I'm going to want to start doing more intimate landscape photography um, and move away from doing the wide vistas all the time and start concentrating on images where we're just picking out individual little details and I think that that's going to give me a lot more scope to be creative. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to pack up my gear because I've got a shot of Otter Island I'm happy with I'm going to move on and I'm going to try and find something a little bit more intimate and a little bit more creative. I've always thought of intimate landscapes as being a bit of a weakness of mine, something I'm not particularly good at, but I recently had reason to go through all of my photographs and pull together my intimate images. And there was actually a lot more good shots than I was expecting. And I think the problem is because I have this mentality that I'm not very good at them, I generally don't do them 
very often. Um, and the reality is probably slightly different from that. I'm by no means brilliant at them, but I'm not perhaps as terrible as I thought. So I do feel confident that in taking this slight change in direction, I do at least have something, some ability to build upon. One of my favorite photographers who I look up to with regard to intimate landscape photography is a Swedish photographer called Hans Strand. And Hans is quoted as saying that the minute you take the horizon out of a shot, as you do with intimate landscapes, you lose that sense of place. And I think that that worries me uh, because I am a photographer who is very much inspired by a single landscape. As I've said before, I don't travel out of the Lake District. It's the Lake District that inspires me. And if I lose that sense of place, I'm concerned that I'm going to lose that connection with the landscape. And I think only time will tell as I do more intimate shots, whether that's actually true or not, whether I'm worrying unnecessarily. The other thing that I don't do very well is explore new things in front of the camera. Typically, if I'm trying something new, I like to be able to concentrate on it. It's very difficult to concentrate uh, on something when you're also trying to film video. And definitely in the past, I've put videos together where I've tried new things and the ultimate end result hasn't been particularly good. And that's definitely the case for my intimate landscapes. A lot of my best intimate landscapes have come from times when I haven't been out filming these videos. So I don't expect, certainly not in the immediate future, for intimate landscapes to figure heavily um, in, in my videos in this channel. You might get the feeling I'm whopping a little bit, um, and that's probably because I'm not 100% sure about this composition. But I think it works. I've just picked out a little area of this tree. I think it's a birch tree. And we've got a little window through to the trunk and then it's surrounded by soft leaves. And the leaves are just on the turn at the moment. And uh, so I think that this makes for a reasonable shot um, and, and, a, and a decent start in my foray into intimate landscapes. I do say that necessity is the mother of invention. I think that goes for evolution as well. What I mean by that is that I am a professional landscape photographer and my business is bringing people to the Lake District and helping them with their photography, but more importantly, giving them a good time. And I think that um, adding intimate landscapes to my repertoire will help to give my customers a better time and help them to get better shots, particularly in conditions like this when the light is very flat. And so that's another motivational factor for me to work on my intimate landscapes and to turn that from potentially a weakness into more of a strength. So those are my thoughts on the photography journey and our evolution as photographers. But if you want to add to the conversation, do share your thoughts by dropping a comment below.